Hey, what is up guys? MKBHD here. This is the iPhone 11 Pro, and this is the iPhone. Fun fact, I'd never actually owned a first generation iPhone, or a second gen, or a third gen. The first iPhone I ever owned and reviewed was the iPhone 5S. This video is mainly for fun, but it's also for people who make a habit of complaining that this year's phones are just last year's phones plus a few small bumps. Because if you haven't noticed, that's kind of the whole point. The whole reason they're coming out with phones over and over again, year after year, besides trying to make as much money as possible, is to offer a small bump and a small improvement year over year. And then when you do feel like upgrading, it adds up to a larger difference the three or four years after you've finally decided to upgrade. These smartphones, it, it's a mature market. It's very rare that we get a truly revolutionary new device, a revolutionary new smartphone. Uh, but back in 2007, this was that. So I wanted to take a quick look back at a retro phone that I never used, the original, the iPhone. So first thing I'm noticing holding it now in 2019 is uh, it's a chunky one, you know, like this is a really thick phone, but it's also really small. It honestly feels about half the size of its much, much, much younger brother. And you know, generally it's the right shape, uh, the rectangle with rounded corners, with a flat display, these big chrome chamfers, uh, big forehead, big chin, we know that, and the physical home button is there. And it's, it's kind of rare these days, but every corner of this device is actually legitimately reachable. That's no problem at all. And the iconic two-tone metal and plastic, it's super recognizable as this first iPhone. You could probably tell as soon as you saw the thumbnail. This is of course a used iPhone, but it's held up pretty well for a decade plus in people's hands. Fun fact though, we all know most modern smartphones, or maybe we don't know, but <laughs> they're hiding their antenna bands in the metal frame of the phone in various places. You can see it around the phone. This first iPhone didn't do that. It just put them all down in the bottom half of the phone and made the bottom plastic so that the radios and antennas could go through that. Passes through plastic better than metal, simple as that. And then there's the display. So while today we have all these huge high resolution displays, six to six and a half inches for a display isn't even blinked at anymore. Back here in 2007, we're looking at a 3.5 inch, 320 by 480 LCD display. Can you see individual pixels? Yes, yes you can see individual pixels. It measures in at officially 163 PPI, but it does get surprisingly bright, so I'm not even mad at that. Uh, as soon as you look at it a little bit off axis though, or you know, even turn it off, you can see the huge difference versus the laminated, super high tech, high refresh rate OLED panels we have today. Um, and that's not even getting into the whole folding phone thing. But it's easy to forget the display when this phone first came out was, I think, the most revolutionary part of the hardware. The fact that it was a glass display and it had 10 finger multi-touch and that was a big leap for the mobile UI. And I remember when this phone came out, it was on AT&T or singular only. And I was a high school kid on Verizon. So I couldn't just switch carriers to get it. So. I had, my first smartphone was uh, an iPhone competitor called the LG Voyager. And I don't know if you remember that, but it was also a touchscreen, but it was a resistive touchscreen and it wasn't multi-touch and it was just a very, very different experience. Not all touchscreens are created alike. So this was a big deal. Uh, I did still enjoy the Voyager though. I did review it. Good times. And um, this is obviously, a. Um a touchscreen phone on the front and a multimedia texting device on the inside. The bottom of the original iPhone is maybe where it shows its age the most. That is the OG 30 pin connector and the speaker and microphone down here in those grills, which means up at the top is where you'll find the headphone jack, but not just any headphone jack. If you can see closely here, this is a recessed three and a half millimeter headphone jack. So if you had headphones with the right diameter, then you were fine. But if you had a thicker cable or if you had a certain right angle connector, they wouldn't work and you'd have to get an extender, basically a headphone jack to headphone jack dongle. <laughs> Power button is up at the top, volume rocker on the left. It stayed this way for a while until they moved the power button to the right for the first time in the iPhone 6. And then that's next to low key, one of the most significant Apple designs, I think in their mobile history, because it's something they've stuck with for every single iPhone to this day, 
and that's the dedicated mute switch. Let me, let me read to you the spec sheet of the original iPhone from 2007. Now, keep in mind, when this came out, it was not about specs. That's not what people were impressed with about the iPhone, but it had specs, so this is just for reference for how far we've come. It had a Samsung-made CPU underclocked to 412 megahertz, uh, and you can see on the back it was an eight gigabyte version, but you could get four or later eight or 16 gigs of storage, and all versions had 128 megabytes of RAM, and then you're looking at a hefty 1400 milliamp hour battery. Oh, and that's a two megapixel camera on the back. No multiple lenses, no flash, no microphones, just a simple camera, no bump. And uh, opening up that camera app, you can see just how simple it all started. Uh, it, it's literally just a viewfinder and a shutter button. Like that's all you needed. There's no tap to focus, no tap to expose. There's no portrait mode, no night mode, no video mode at all and no selfie mode either. Oh yeah, that's right. The first iPhone didn't have a selfie camera. In fact, no iPhones had selfie cameras until the iPhone 4. So there's your trivia fun fact of the day. And here's some photos I've taken on the iPhone 1. And you know, on one hand, I'm actually pretty impressed that they still look decent at all. I mean, I wouldn't post these, but you know, at least the colors are decent. But on the other hand, you can tell it's basically a webcam, you know, there's noise in every photo, no matter how much light you give it, and it's like splotchy noise, exposure is impossible to nail, focus is impossible to nail. Yeah, it's bad, but that's what makes it so incredible is that comparison with the iPhone we have today and the fact that this is one of the major stepping stones to the mobile photography that we kind of take for granted in our pockets. This is the best Apple could make 12 years ago versus the best Apple could make today, which has me really pumped about the best we're gonna have another decade from now. And then performance. Well, it would be almost unfair to review the performance now, but it's actually pretty impressive that it still turns on, boots up, and works. Uh, the battery life is about three hours since it's a decade old small battery, but for the most part, you can see the software like it existed back in the day. Uh, the last software update the original iPhone got from you know literally the first version of iOS was iOS 3.1.3 .3 that you can see here. And you can see how simple it is. There's just slide to unlock, no touch ID, no face ID. It's fairly responsive, but you know, no control center, no notification shade. All these things came later. In fact, believe it or not, the first version of iOS didn't even have wallpapers. That was eventually added as a feature. Plus some nifty default wallpapers were added that have slowly become iconic. Also look at this voice memo app. I can actually see how this is one of those things that really excited people in 2007. It's impressively smooth. Anyway, I don't know about you, but seeing the two of these phones side by side really sort of refreshes my appreciation for how good this mobile tech has gotten, especially lately. If you go back to the Internet Wayback Machine archive, you can see what Apple's website looked like on that fateful day in 2007 when this thing launched and they called it a breakthrough communications device and all that fun stuff. My favorite part is if you click through to the high tech section, they talk about the crazy new sensors that they put in this phone, including an accelerometer so it can tell when you're holding it portrait or landscape and rotate automatically, and an ambient light sensor so it can raise or lower the brightness, thereby enhancing the user experience and saving power at the same time. And then of course this thing spawned the iPod Touch, first piece of tech I ever bought, um, and the iPad and all the iPhones that came after it and the rest is history. This thing inarguably changed tech design forever. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this fun little look back. I think this phone would be amazing to do like a sort of a challenge. Like, I don't know who else would do this, maybe another YouTuber, but like trying to use just this phone for a week or something. I don't know who would do that. Maybe tag someone if you have some ideas, but yeah, it was just sort of fun to actually turn it on, use it, and get some experience with iOS 3.1.3. Also, this is a perfect opportunity to give a little shout out or a shameless plug to RetroTech, which is coming back. So a lot of you may remember earlier this year, we did a pilot episode diving deep into the original Game Boy. I'll leave a link below. So now since then, and I've tweeted this, we finished shooting and editing six incredible episodes, all of different iconic pieces of RetroTech. And so they're coming right at the beginning of December, and I am really excited for you guys to see them. I mean, we, we spent a lot of time on them, but there's also some amazing guests, great segments. They turned out great. So either way, thanks for watching this one. 
And feel free to leave a comment. What was your first smartphone? If mine was the LG Voyager, was yours the iPhone or was yours something else? Feel free to let me know. I'll hang out in the comments and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.